Jim is first, I got McGeehan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be brief. I just wanted to address the body quickly here about something that I've noticed that is a larger phenomenon, not just within our state, but within the country as a whole. And I feel that uh, it's very surreal. It's a very surreal phenomenon for me. And I think many of you probably sense it too. Um, we are quickly approaching a post-constitutional era within our country and within several other states. Okay, let me give you an example. Anybody been following the news recently over in Europe? There's about 100,000 Russian regulars on the border of the Ukraine. And right now, it seems as if the President of the United States, by unilateral action, is, as of this morning's news, uh, considering sending something like 40,000 troops into Eastern Europe to confront some sort of skirmish along the Ukrainian border that really we have no deep understanding of. Why do I say that uh, we're living in this post-constitutional era, though? The legislature and the Congress hasn't been consulted. There's been no uh, consideration of some sort of declaration of war. We're moving closer and closer to a dangerous predicament in Eastern Europe, all because of one man who has this unilateral power, this authoritarian power to essentially do whatever he wants. Is that how the original understanding of the American tradition of government was supposed to sort of conclude? We don't have to really look any further than our own state capitol. Because, you know, for two years now, we've also seen this post-constitutional order here in Charleston. I learned in eighth grade in civics class that the legislative branch was the exclusive branch that made laws. Well, for two years now, that hasn't been the case. Two years now, there's been an usurp. That exclusive power has been usurped by the executive branch. The executive branch now claims that they too can issue laws or things that have the effect of law. Maybe it hasn't been exercised as, as much as in other states, but there, to my knowledge, has been no concessions of political power within the executive branch of our own state capital. Now just think, if that's happening here, think about the rest of the country and what's going on in the various states there. Think about Washington, D.C. You know, this is a very scary notion that we are moving, if we haven't, if we haven't crossed the Rubicon yet, it seems like we're about to. And see, the Constitution that we all um, raise our right hands and swear on the Bible to uphold and defend, it doesn't have any meaning unless we embody the essence of its meaning within ourselves and it lives within ourselves and we carry that out. And I feel that we are, uh, many of us, not just in this chamber, but many people um, have given up on that idea for one reason or the next. What comes next? What comes next in this 
post-constitutional new uh, order? I'm not sure, but it seems that we're headed in that trajectory. Okay, there's this famous, probably the most famous um, philosophical dialogue. Many of you probably read it, Plato's Republic. And if you remember, the old uh, character that went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Plato's Socrates, named Thrasymachus, what was his definition of justice? Well, justice just belongs to the stronger, which basically is reduced to justice equals might is right. We have objective principles embodied in these constitutional orders that we swear to uphold that, that, that create an objective morality, an objective virtue, an objective form of justice. So, you know, going forward, do you want to live in a world this nihilist, this proto-Nietzschean, Thrasymachus world where might equals right? Or do you want to live in a world where we have the rule of law, where we have the checks and balances, the separation of powers? Do we want to reclaim that? Do we want to prevent this, this, this trend, this very dangerous trend from moving across the Rubicon if it's not too late already, and try to do something about it in our little corner of the world and push back. And that's what we really need to do. You know, we have legislative leaders, but they need to act as leaders of the legislative branch, okay? The leaders of the legislative branch, in the traditional sense, must be jealous of the legislative powers that are exclusive to our branch. And what I mean by that, they, that means, they means they have to safeguard the lawmaking powers, okay? And sometimes there's not gonna be much of a compromise. Sometimes rational debate, there is no middle position. It's a contest of wills. You know, the lawmaking powers belong to us, not to the executive branch, the same way the lawmaking powers belong to the U.S. Congress and not to the president. And if you ignore that, and the Constitution just becomes a piece of paper and it no longer lives within us to defend, very dangerous consequences come about, not just in the short term, but for the long term, of our society. We really need to take a stand and do something about it within our control, even if it's going to cost us, you know, some points with other people in the building. We might not be able to get some favors here and there. We have to sacrifice for this higher goal. We must do something about this. Otherwise, it's a foregone conclusion that we're going to head down the same sort of trend here. And the American tradition basically will go by the wayside sooner or later. So I, I went a little bit longer than um, what I... Um, planned on, but, you know, I'm going to be pushing forward a few bills. One is the emergency powers bill to try to restrain the executive branch and try to reclaim the proper role the legislature has over the lawmaking authority. And two, there's a reason why I've been introducing this so-called Defend the Guard Act for so many years. It's precisely because of the situations that we can foresee coming about, say, in the Ukraine. 
How do we have National Guardsmen that are able to stay here and back up hospitals, you know, respond to emergencies, natural disasters? If those guys are sitting over there protecting the eastern border of the Ukraine, how is that even in the American national security interest? Do we really want to see our West Virginia boys and girls going over to some war Biden wants to get us into against the Russians? We want to see, I mean, I'm not sure if it's going to turn into a hot war. I don't know. Do we really want to risk that? We need to return to the old way, the old republic, objective morality, and we need to reclaim a constitutional order, and we need to do it from our corner of the world. And that's all I'm asking. Consider what I'm saying. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman of the 19th, they got Griffith. House will be in order. Gentleman 19.